Steve Tikolo, newly appointed coach of the Kenya under-19s cricket team. Welcome to the JSO interview. Thank you, John. You are widely regarded as the best Kenyan cricket player ever, having scored the most runs and taken the second most wickets for the team in one-day internationals or ODIs. Such has been your dominance of Kenyan cricket that you possess six of the nine highest scores by a Kenyan batsman in one-day internationals. You have made three one-day international centuries and you have been dismissed in the 90s on three occasions. A wonderful set of statistics. You are newly returned from Uganda as batting coach to take on the role of coach of our under-19s cricket team. So in a way, the future of Kenyan cricket, if any, lies largely in your hands. But let's start at the beginning. How did you yourself start playing cricket? Well, John, uh, it goes back to where we were born in Park Road, Ngara area. Uh, there is a cricket field there, so early Muslim club. As uh, youngsters, we used to go there and watch cricket matches. And that is where, you know, we took up this game. As young boys, you know, we played on the sides there using tennis balls and maize cobs and bats carved from wooden sticks. And this is how we got into the game. Slowly, slowly, you know, clubs started up, you know, approaching us. And uh, that is how we started playing cricket. At what point did you become captain of the Kenyan team? I became captain of the Kenyan team uh, the year 20, uh, 2002 and captain the team to the year 2009. So is this after the great date of myth where Kenya is meant to have beaten the West Indies? When did that happen? Uh, the West Indies victory came in the 1996 World Cup. That was our first uh, World Cup. And you were in that team? I was part of that team. I was uh, as uh, the main batsman. Right. And Maurice Odumbe was uh, the captain. And what happened in the successive World Cups? Uh, the 1999 World Cup, we didn't perform too well. So it forced us to go back to the drawing board. Uh, the board got a new coach for us, Sandy Patil. And you know, we started working from there uh, you know, the goal was the 2003 World Cup. We played a lot of games between 99 and 2003 against tough nations. And this is how we built up a very strong team going into 2003 World Cup. Right, okay. You have played, you retired at an age where in many other sort of cricketing nations, you'd have been, in a word, too old. I mean, to mention the Morris Odumbes of... It's the names Ticolo or Dumbe, they've been there for uh, two decades. Uh, what happens after you? Because where's the next Ticolo? Because that's where your uh, province is now. Yeah, the next Ticolo, I believe, will come from uh, nurturing this game at the grassroots level and uh, take it also to schools. And, you know, this is where I come in now as uh, the under-19 coach. My, my vision is to try and uh, take the game to the grassroots level and obviously get it uh, being played in schools so that you know, we get a good base of players coming through. And once you have those numbers, uh, you can select the best out of that. Right, we'll go back again one bit. You've just come from Uganda as batting coach for 10 months. Uh, and I do believe that the head coach is also a Kenyan. Is that Martin? Yeah, Ma uh, Martin Suji is the head coach. Right, so in the 10 months that you were there, what did you achieve in Uganda as uh, batting coach? Uganda contracted me as a batting coach. My job was to try and uh, help their batting because they, they, they felt their batting was not uh, producing the results that were required. So I went there and worked with the boys. And when I left, uh, the batting had really improved. And uh, in those 10 months, we managed to qualify for two big international tournaments. The 2020 World Cup qualifiers, which will be held in Dubai in November, and then the main World Cup, the 50-over World Cup, which will be held in New Zealand uh, early January next year. 
So a sensitive question. Would you say that the state of cricket in Uganda is better than that in Kenya at present? Uh, I would say they've so, sort of caught up with Kenya. I still believe Kenya is a better side than Uganda, but uh, Uganda are making big strides. But we've lost to them in the recent past. To lose is in some way in sporting terms to fail. Well, yeah, we lost to them, especially in the tournament that we, you know, was held in Kampala. I was the batting coach of Uganda, and probably that did help a little bit. Right, so what are we doing wrong? Well, obviously, there are a number of things uh, we, you know, we need to look at. As I said earlier on, we need to take the game to the grassroots uh, level so that, you know, get a lot of Kenyans playing. Once you have the numbers, you so, can... So, um, it's always comparative here. Are there a lot of Ugandans playing, a lot of Tanzanians playing, a lot of Rwandis playing in the community? How are we doing cricket-wise? Uh, Uganda is ahead of us in terms of uh, the local Ugandans playing. Uh, they have the numbers, something that has been announced by them having grounds where anyone can walk in and practice and play cricket. Right. It, 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 it's significant that you should say that because I'm going to take you to a set of quotes that we discovered, things that you said in the past, and I'm, there are three of them. Uh, I'm, the first one that I'm going to read concerns the idea of management of cricket in Kenya. And I think it was in 2011, perhaps, two years ago, you were said, the new management team that came in, they haven't had any money to work with. They've only been depending on the grants from the ICC that associate countries get. We have not had a sponsor for the last seven or eight years. It has also been tough on them in terms of managing the little grants they get from the ICC to look after the national team, do the grassroots development and management. So I'm saying to you that you don't have that wonderful a job because you have a management that has no money. And well, you have no sponsors. True, true that uh, one thing that I need to do in my role, as I said, is to, you know, to try and bring up the youngsters, get them to play good cricket. No, but I'm saying you can't do that with respect, Steve, because you, need, you, you are employed, uh, like the rest of us, you're an employee of an institution. And the institution, you're saying, you, do you have a sponsor at this point in time? No, we don't have a sponsor. We had a sponsor until uh, 2003, which was breweries and then breweries left because of issues that were related to management. Right, so would you like to make a comment on that? Because my, my, my feeling is that if you're trying to do something, you ought to have a sort of optimum level of support in order to make it possible. Otherwise, you can't deliver the goods. Now, in terms of management, you were said in the past that the local cricket board was unable to give you the support you needed. What has convinced you to leave Uganda in the hope that you'd enjoy more support? Well, things have changed now. As uh, we rightly know, there's a new management in place. And uh, I believe with the new management and the confidence of our sponsors in the new management, we will have a sponsor. And that will help us you know, try and obtain uh, the goals that we have in nurturing the, you know, the young talent.